हेलो माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर निधि शुक्ला असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन फिजियोथेरेपी डिपार्टमेंट फ्रॉम रामा यूनिवर्सिटी कानपुर सो टुडे लेक्चर आई एम डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द एंकल स्प्रेन सो फर्स्टली वॉट इज द स्प्रेन द टर्म स्प्रेन इज नोन एज अ लिगामेंटल इंजरी लिगामेंट इंजरी सो इन अवर बॉडी एनी टाइप ऑफ लिगामेंट इंजरी विल बी अकर सो इट इज कॉल्ड एज अ स्प्रेन सो द टर्म स्प्रेन दैट इज लिगामेंट इंजरी सो नाउ आई एम डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द वॉट इज द एंकल स्प्रेन सो एंकल स्प्रेन इज वेन द एंकल लिगामेंट इज गेटिंग टॉन द पार्शियल लिगामेंट टॉन एंड द कम्प्लीटली लिगामेंट गेटिंग टॉन सो दिस इज कॉल्ड एज द एंकल स्प्रेन ओके सो दिस इज द डेफिनेशन ऑफ द एंकल स्प्रेन इज फर्स्ट दैट वेन द एंकल लिगामेंट इज कम्प्लीटली और पार्शली गेटिंग टॉन is called as the ankle sprain so the second point is the epidemiology so the epidemiology of ankle sprain ankle sprain is the common condition in number of sports is like it is very much more common in the basketball player footballers uh, rugby ballet dancer in uh, this type of sports population it is very much more common why because these sports are are a very high impedance sports in this sports uh, is the last type of cutting and twisting turning activities in that in that cases the ankle is uh, getting in the inversion and the plantar flexion so the ankle sprain will be occurred in the australian uh, basketball uh, association that is recommended that uh, the basketballer uh, are very much more prone to the ankle sprain why because of the jumping and twisting activity in the jumping activity they are uh, jump in the ground and the foot is in goes in the inversion and the plantar flexion so the lateral ligament is very much more commonest to getting injured approximately in the united state uh, they will uh, researches and uh, uh, there was uh, um, getting the research and they suggested that the 2 billion population of the sports that uh, uh, is occurring the ankle sprain so it is very much more common in the sports population in the normal people uh, it is very much more common why because Uh, those who are wearing very high heels and uh, those who are uh, just like running and walking in uneven surfaces so the ankle is going in the inversion twisting turn and the ligament is easily getting torn so in that population it is very much more common this is the second most commonest injury uh in the population we are also suggested in the sports population and also in the uh, normal people those who are uh, previously getting uh, ankle sprain so uh, it is easily getting a uh, recurrent injury because it is the type of recurrent injury when the ankle uh, ligament is getting torn in the lateral stage poor rehabilitation and uh, poor uh, proper uh, uh, treatment so it is recurrent injury because of the ankle uh, is the elasticity and uh, also the uh, relevance will be uh, weak so easily uh, in the uh, degenerative condition will be occurred okay so this is the epidemiology so epidemiology is conclusion that uh, easily is the commonest in common in sports population then second point common in basket ball player third point uh, those who are wearing high heels 
this is very much more common and those who are running or walking in an uneven surface then who are those who are getting previous ankle sprain so it is very much more common in uh, those people and also in the sports population okay next point i am discussing about the clinical relevant anatomy so the third point is the clinical anatomy okay so the clinical anatomy uh, ankle uh, joint uh, that is uh, articulated with the three bones first bone is the tibia that is articulate with the talus tibia plus fibula that is articulate with the talus bone okay and they are forming the ankle joint in the ankle joint the uh, in the medial side in the ankle joint there is the medial side is one of the strongest ligament that is giving the stability of the joint that is the deltoid ligament that is giving the medial side of stability of the joint and the lateral side there is the three ligament that is giving the stability of the joint that is atfl cfl and the ptfl atfl is the anterior talofibular ligament that is the anterior talo fibular ligament cfl is the calcaneo fibular ligament and the ptfl is the posterior talo fibular ligament so there is the three ligament that giving the lateral side of stability of the joint atfl is going in the anterior side Uh, of anterior and the tibial side of the uh, ligament cfl is the calcaneo fibular ligament calcaneum bone is the backward side so this is giving the stability of the posterior side and also the ptfl is giving the posterior side of stability the deltoid ligament that uh, is uh, made up of four ligaments that is the attl pttl and the tcl and tnl attl is the anterior talo tibial ligament pttl is the posterior talo tibial ligament tcl is the tibial calcaneal ligament and the tnl is the tibial navicular ligament these four ligament giving the stability of the medial side of the joint so medial side uh, these are the strongest ligament giving the stability of the joint and the lateral side only the three ligament giving the stability of the joint more common injury of the ankle sprain is occurred in the atfl that is the anterior talofibular ligament why because these uh, this ligament is uh, too much short ligament giving the stability of the anterior side of the ligament in the anterior side uh, when uh, Uh, the foot is going in the inversion and the plantar flexion so the injury will be occur okay so there is the medial side or lateral side ligament giving the stability of the joint one is the sesamoid is uh, we are saying the high side of stability is the higher upper most side of the stability giving the uh, Uh, is the interosseous membrane giving the stability of the joint transverse ligament giving the interosseous membrane second is the transverse ligament third one 
is the anterior anterior ligament posterior ligament this uh, these uh, ligaments giving the stability of the anterior side and the posterior side of the ankle joint so ankle joint is one of the weight bearing joint second most common of the weight bearing joint why the talus is uh, a flattened bone and uh, there is the tibia and the fibula that is articulated and forming the ankle joint in the medial side it's the strongest ligament giving the stability of the joint there is a four ligament in the lateral side is three ligaments giving the stability of the joint that is the atfl cfl and ptfl in the highest uh, highest disc is the transverse ligament there is the um, uh, mid between is the interosseous membrane anterior ligament posterior ligament giving the stability of the joint so this is the gross anatomy and the clinical relevant anatomy of the ankle joint now the fourth one is um, the risk factor risk factor of the ankle sprain this is the uh, commonest risk factor is the first one is the intrinsic risk factor and the second one is the extrinsic risk factor so there's the two types of risk factor uh, that we have covered as ankle sprain the most common risk factor of the ankle sprain those uh, who are previous injury will be occurred then uh, they are easily getting uh, torn of the ankle sprain easily uh, uh, our uh, foot is going in the inversion and easily um, ankle sprain will be occurred so this is the main common risk factor of the ankle sprain in the intrinsic risk factor uh, there is a number of uh, uh, common point that is age sex uh, limb dominance uh, and the anatomy of ankle age um, in the uh, this is common in the age of uh, adult age is that is the 18 to uh, 25 commonest ankle sprain will be occurred why in that stage uh, the most of the athlete uh, playing and when uh, they are uh, uh, when they are playing the highest impedance of sports easily uh, the ankle sprain will be occurred okay sex female and male in the female the ankle sprain is very much more common and the ratio is 2 is to 1 2 is the female and 1 is the male why because of the white pelvic and the knee is going in the inversion and uh, the knock knee and the foot is going in the outward so easily the our um, easily our uh, the foot is going in the inversion so easily when uh, another force or the outsider force will be occurred in the ankle so inversion and plantar flexion will be occurred so the ligamental injury is very much more common in the male there's a q angle is reduced also knock knee also reduced so this is uh, less common okay the limb dominancy is uh, when uh, the athlete is in uh, the right side of limb dominant so easily of the right side of ligamental injury occurred and the left side of the athlete so left side of the ligament injury will be occurred so limb dominancy it is uh, occurred anatomy of the ankle joint if the previous injury will be occurred uh, if the previous injury was occurred so uh, easily uh, ankle is going in the inversion and the injury is commonest so this is an intrinsic factor next is the extrinsic factor of the ankle sprain the extrinsic risk factor is uh, those athlete who are wearing very tight shoes and uh, the uh, sole is very hard and uh, also very soft so they when they are playing of the in the ground so if the shoes is very much more tight so ankle is not stable then easily twisting and turning activity in the ankle so easily the sprain occur okay so footwear it is very much more common in sports because foot uh, say the sole is the sole of foot in the sports because number of uh, uh, number of uh, 
uh, sports. There is the number of shoes, different type of shoes. Uh, when we are saying that uh, uh, if the footballer, uh, uh, that we are the cricketer shoes, so easily getting the injury. If the basketballer wearing the footballer shoes, so easily injury will be occurred because other the types of uh, uh, activities will be occurred in the like the basketballers is the jumping activities in the footballer is the cutting twisting activities is very much more common in the cricketers is a uh, uh, running activities so different type of activities so different types of shoes if they are wearing the uh, another type of shoes so easily injury will be occurred okay then uh, is uh, those who are not uh, uh, taking the prevention that is uh, the uh, taping bracing those who are not wearing so easily getting injured then i am going to the third point uh, sorry fifth point is the grading so it is divided into three grades that is the grade 1 grade 2 and the grade 3 the grade 1 is the mild ankle sprain grade 2 is the moderate ankle sprain and the grade 3 is the severe ankle sprain in the mild ankle sprain is the only the microscopic injury will be occurred the moderate ankle sprain is the uh, is like a macroscopic injury will be occurred but the ligament is uh, is intact in the severe ankle sprain the uh, huge injury will be occurred and the completely ligament is torn okay so in the grading system we are dividing the sign and symptoms that is the mild ankle sprain only the pain and the swelling uh, swelling then the moderate in the grade 2 uh, the sign and symptoms is occurring like a bruising loss of function pain and swelling in the third type of grade that is the completely loss of function bruising pain swelling and uh, they are not uh, they are give up okay so this is the grading system or the sign symptoms now the uh, we are going the six point six point is the how can evaluate or examination examination we are doing the palpation in the lateral side or the medial side we are uh, the sign uh, the special test going the special test uh, for the atfl we are doing the anterior drawer test the ptfl we are doing the posterior drawer test for the cfl we are doing the uh, talar tilt test okay so these are the special tests for uh, we are uh, uh, making the provisional diagnosis okay and also we are going the radiological evaluation that is uh, we are doing the mri or x-ray also now the last point is the seventh is uh, how can we rehabilitate so rehabilitation of the ankle sprain so rehabilitation in the rehabilitation we are dividing the uh, phases wise of the treatment the phase one phase two phase three and this four in the phase one uh, that is the timing of all uh, only the one to three days uh, we are uh, using gi giving the patient the price protocol that is the prevention uh, rise elevation ice compression okay in the phase two in the phase two uh, we are doing uh, only the active movement and the passive movement of the ankle joint okay only or uh, giving the strengthening exercise also like the toe curls and the alphabet making also okay in the phase three we are uh, doing the strengthening exercises stretching also stretching for the gastrocnemius and soleus muscle that, that is the calf muscle uh, then uh, we are uh, also stress the tendo achilles and the plantar fascia okay and uh, also uh, the we are doing the range of motion exercise so in the phase four uh, the return to sports of the athlete so uh, we are doing also the previous exercises all and including uh, we are uh, doing the plyometric training and 
also the agility training and proprioceptive training this is very very much more important in the last phase why because we are uh, just athlete going to the uh, later stage of the in the field ground so that's why uh, we are doing the strengthening exercise stretching exercises plyometric also the agility exercise and the balance training last but not least is prevention very very important we are when we are not doing the prevention also occurring uh, the ankle sprain so prevention we are using the ankle braces second we are also uh, using the mulligan taping and also we are uh, using the k taping those uh, athletes are uh, going in on ground so using the k taping and uh, also the foot wear modification so this is all over the ankle sprain thank you so much